Hi, I'm Shanti. That is behind Shanti Finance. The month of October being around Halloween, you will see over the social media is full of witches and goblins and elves and all the magical creature paintings. And I'm a big fan of fantasy. So I wanted to do a witch painting by myself for myself. And uh, then I got to thinking, like, what kind of a witch do I want to paint? And then I thought of uh, Hermione, and she happens to be my most favorite witch. So this is a watercolor tutorial for today on painting how what Hermione is brewing. Let's watch out. I started off with a face, which I put in a basic layer of skin tone, and then I wetted my brush and made it kind of damp dry and tried to pull out some of the lighter areas um, this is a very useful technique when you're doing watercolors to just uh, erase some of the initial colors and get the highlight portions out in the initial part instead of using more and more color after working a little bit on the face i thought okay let me now start on the background this is a kind of background that's very popular you would see artists doing it all the time it's kind of like a drippy looking background but i have not used it a lot in the past but i thought of giving it a try for this particular painting because this had kind of like a dreamy um a look so this uh, dripping look probably would look good that's what i thought so what I'm doing is I'm wetting the whole background with a lot of water. Then I'm putting it upside down and around the edges of my figure, I am putting in colors so that it, because of the gravitational force, naturally the water and the paint pigments along with the water is coming down on the very bottom of the paint and getting collected there. And that's why it kind of looks like a very nice dripping look. I'm doing the same thing on the left hand side of the figure as well. And I'll do the same on the right hand side as well. However, on the top, I've used the colors uh, blue, different shades of blue and gray. On the bottom, I'm using uh, different shades of brown and red. And on the right hand side, I will use different shades, shades of crimson and purple. So that's the only difference. Other than that, it is more or less the same technique have used in the background everywhere the areas in the background there uh, where i have not painted at all or left very light are the ones that i will be painting um smoke um like and kind of images inside the smoke so those are the ones that have kept empty on to the hair uh, now this um doing this hair was a little bit tricky she has kind of like a orangey colored um brown brunette hair I don't know whether to call it brunette or really orange red hair um, it's kind of between a redhead and a brunette and uh, because of the lighting it the shadows had a lot of blue and purple and crimson which is typically not the colors that you put in hair but i just relied on my reference photo and worked off it and worked according to it so the colors that i'm currently using for the darker areas is purples um, blues grays and for the lighter areas I'm using yellow on to the little details of the face I'm trying to put in little shadows around the eyes creating the eyes nostrils mouth um, the painting or the reference photo that I have she had quite a bit of makeup on so it was a little bit more rosier than it naturally would be and obviously it's a character from movie I don't I expect them to wear some makeup to look um, the part of the character so but I kept it a little bit less magenta than what the makeup looked like so it, it might look a little bit dull to you but I just thought that for the painting that would work the best instead of putting in the real um, bright magenta colors but I'll let you judge that and let me know whether you think that worked or whether I should have added more bright colors so this area of the face, it's kind of like a about one and a half inch face. So it was 
a little bit tricky with uh, always tricky when it you paint in such small areas to get the fine details and make it look perfect especially when you are wanting to the face to look like something like to get the likeness of the face of Hermione but I decided I'm not going to worry too much about the likeness for uh, this particular painting because anybody who looks at this picture would know who this is and uh, if it doesn't look exactly like that I'll deal with it that's totally okay with it was totally okay for me in this case now on to the clothing I'm doing the sweater first and uh, that I have I'm using um, different shades of gray and with the gray I've used quite a bit of blue to make it look a little bit of brighter gray and uh, the darker areas I'm adding more pigment and in the lighter areas I'm adding more water so it kind of automatically creates a gradual transition um, the dress had a lot of fine details like uh, the rims around the sweater and all that had crimson and yellow and I tried to get the details as much as possible but then I thought I won't let that bog down bog me down too much I just go with the general colors and uh, let the painting flow onto the tie there was bright yellow and a maroon um, and that's what I tried to do I had to go back and paint it a couple of times to get the right colors on the tie because I thought the tie needed to look a little bit bright to make the painting work but for the rest of the dress i just followed with the general outline of colors and not did not worry too much on the details so there i'm going around the face and darkening up the hair area and uh, lightening up the face here and there uh, i'm using the subtraction technique a lot on the face uh, for this particular painting um, because this was a very small area if i added too much of color and kept on adding it it really d would not work very well so instead of adding too much color i lightened up areas and added darker brighter areas around it and that seemed to work much better onto the hair once again now i'm adding the lighter colors of the hair which are i'm using yellow ochre and a bright yellow color i think it is called cadmium yellow but i'm not very sure so anyways um, mixing those two yellows for the very lighter colors and for the darker colors once again i'm using purple blue and crimson and uh, it, it took me quite a bit of layering um, to get to the right uh, color values because if i'm using a lot of water then it is giving me a nice blend but it is not giving me a very bright color so uh, quite a few I guess uh, layers uh, needed to be done to get the hair right and uh, that's something very common with my paintings if you have watched um, any of my tutorials ever in any medium I like to play with the layers and add color and highlights and all those parts and different layers instead of doing it at one go uh, I guess that's that's a bit uh, important if you're trying to do realism or surrealism which I uh, mainly play with so onto the right side of the hair the same pattern only that this is a little bit away from the light source so the lighter um, uh, areas of the hair is a little bit less and more of the dark curls like more magentas browns and purples will show in this area um, I was painting mostly wet and wet so it got uh, kind of like uh, blended in and did not have much of details in the initial layer so at the very end of the painting I went back and added a little bit more of details to make sure the curls look right I missed out a little bit area on the cauldron and I'm sorry about that I just forgot to hit the record button on my um, video camera and I missed that part but anyways the rest of the painting is there and I guess it's no different from the rest of the area the cauldron I've painted the same area it's just that the light reflecting of the cauldron I thought that was more very interesting to paint onto the hands I'm doing the same thing like as a face doing the lightest color first and mostly working on wet on wet once it's a little bit dry then I am putting in a lot of the fine details and darker areas to get the really dark and bright colors you have to use as little water as possible and more of the paint so the pigment is concentrated and you get very dark and bright colors but for light 
areas you want to on blended areas you want to use a lot of water and paint wet on wet where you want clear demarcated lines there you want to work uh, on a dry surface onto the right hand doing the more or less the same thing as i did with the left hand or left hand with it with the right hand whatever it's kind of skewed up when you're working um looking at the mirror image so i painted the paint in the bottle first so that i could uh, get the uh, fingers to pop out and it was easier for me that way and uh, then i came back and added a lot of more details on the fingers and uh, finish the bottle as well and um, i closely followed the reference photo and tried to depict as much as the reflect reflections as possible but at the end i have to admit that i did not want to get bogged down by the details too much on this because there was a lot of details on this painting so i added a little bit of uh, like an image of like fire under the cauldron but uh, once again not too much of detail on that area just a hint of light or fire now on to the cloud of smoke area i thought when there is Har hermione there has to be a mention of hogwarts so i tried to create a little image of hogwarts in the cloud that she uh, cloud of smoke that is coming out of her brew uh, this is purely my imagination and I mixed up a couple of photos of Hogwarts and came up with this one. It might not be absolutely perfectly the like the building of Hogwarts, but it's more or less the same. So I hope you will um, take that with a grain of salt, I guess. That's what I would like to say. And uh, I painted mostly wet on wet on wet. And then at the very end of uh, the building, I uh, added some fine details where I used completely uh, a lot of pigment on completely dry surface so most of the areas I worked wet on wet for all the shadows and lights and darks and all that I started with a very light brown and then I kept on adding uh, grays purples and browns even a little bit of crimson here and there to add a touch of color I added some greens in certain areas as well although the greens were mixed with some amount of blue so it's kind of like a bluish green kind of uh, like I said I was looking working off a couple of reference photos and tried to stay a little bit true to the reference photos although like i said entire painting i never tried to get bogged down by too much of details and tried to do a little bit of everything but not too much and i added a little bit of greenery too i just looked like the building could use a little bit of green uh, but once again not a lot of details just a little implication added a little sky and around the sky kind of created the image of smoke to for the brew and that's about it for this painting i hope you enjoyed uh, the painting and the process and learned a trick or two let me know in the comments what your thoughts are about the painting and do not forget to hit the like and subscribe and notification bell thank you